So I'm evaluating the uh, XL6006 based LED driver, SEPIC uh, LED driver. And uh, I'm looking at the feedback pin, pin 5. I've got the scope on there. And what I can see is the 490 hertz uh, frequency of the pulse width modulation coming from the Arduino. Now if I turn the PWM value a little bit lower, I can get rid of the switching frequency of the uh, driver and just have the 490 hertz. And you can see there that the scope is picking up that 490 hertz frequency. Now if I raise the PWM value a bit, you can see the LEDs come on. There's the switching frequency. Now because the uh, PWM frequency and the 180 kilohertz switching frequency of the driver are asynchronous, the scope is having a little bit of trouble locking on. Now let me take it all the way up so that it's full brightness. And it's a bit difficult to see because the scope's being blotted out by the LEDs, but I'll wind up the time base. And you can see there the waveform, let's come over this side, of the switch mode converter. And it's reading on the frequency scale 188 kilohertz. Uh, that's a little bit high because the data sheet says, where is it? Um, yes, in the middle there, fixed 180 kilohertz switching frequency. Well, okay, I'm measuring 188 kilohertz, but there it is. Um, now, the scope is on, if you can see it. don't think you can, but anyway, it's saying 500 millivolts per division. So we've got about 2 volts of... Um, uh, voltage span on that switching frequency, which uh, which is about right, I guess. Now, while I was thinking about this yesterday, I realized that I'd got the current from that 1.2 volt battery actually going through the opto isolator the wrong way. It was going from emitter through to the collector. Um, I didn't realize transistors could work like that, but anyway, that's what uh, seemed to be happening. And now that I've rewired it so that it's going in the normal uh, direction, collector through to emitter, it does seem that the um, brightness control is a little bit more linear. Don't have that strange jump in brightness. Um, but what you can see from the scope and the LEDs is that the LEDs go off completely when the PWM is about uh, 10%, uh, a little bit more than that, and you can see the switching frequency ap appear, the LEDs come on, and then the LEDs go to full brightness when the PWM gets to 100%. So it's kind of 10% to 100% is the range of PWM control. Now the fall time is rather long. You can see there's a rather nasty curve in the drop-off of that waveform. So what I thought I'd do is just get a resistor and try and use that to pull down the um, opto. So let's have a look. Yeah, so that does improve the fall time of the opto. So I'll plug that resistor in. So that's there pulling the opto down to ground through 10k that is. So that helps, um, but it doesn't seem to massively influence the um, the effect of the PWM control. Just looks nicer on the scope, I suppose. But there is that delay between the fall of the PWM signal and the switching frequency, the switching of the uh, switch mode converter in this driver actually starting up, but I guess that's just inherent in the chip because it doesn't seem that by improving the shape of that fall that I've uh, managed to influence that at all, really. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was um, switch from the 1.2 volt battery and go to a 12 volt battery pack. So here I've got 10 uh, 1.2 volt Eneloop nickel metal hydrodes. That's 12 volts uh, going into the up to isolator and um, the effect of that is that the the uh, 490 hertz of course is a much taller waveform but if I turn the PWM pot you can see the switching um, of the uh, driver there but it's of course it's now dwarfed by the 
12 volts of the um, battery on the Opto, but it doesn't seem to affect linearity that much. In fact, if anything, it's made it slightly worse. It, um, it's very hard to gauge, but it seems to reach full brightness um, some way before we hit 100% on the PWM. So it now seems that the PWM is kind of uh, from about 10 to 90%. Now the reason I've done this is because you don't really want a, a battery pack in this circuit. We want to take a voltage that is available and that's here, the 12 volts um, coming in. So if I could somehow route that through the opto isolator, then of course I don't need a pack of batteries, which is uh, an inconvenient thing to do. So I'm gonna have a look at doing that now. And uh, so finally I've routed uh, incoming 12 volts, which is the supply to the SEPIC converter through this uh, blue wire here. I've put it through another resistor. Um, I just happened to find a 4K7 because there's a lot of current potentially available from the uh, lead acid battery. And I just wanted to uh, make sure that couldn't do any damage. Um, and it's had a secondary effect actually, as it, it's lowered the height of the um, pulse width modulation waveform. That's around four volts now, two volts per division there at the bottom channel one. So it's uh, slightly lowered that. But um, that I suppose is the end of this uh, little test. We now have pulse width modulation, full control of brightness and over the full range of um, brightness as well because you can see that I can shut the controller switching right off at about 10% and uh, by taking the pot up to the top I can get the switching to occur over 100% of the waveform. So we have full brightness control. You need to limit the range of PWM that you're putting in but um, I think that's uh, reasonably successful. Linearity is a bit suspect, but um, it's not too bad. And so to sum up, this uh, very handy little um, SEPIC LED driver from Shure Electronics is a bit different to all their other drivers in that you can't pull the enable input uh, down to ground. You actually have to raise it a little way above ground to shut the thing off. Now, if you're happy to do a little bit of soldering, as I've done here with the yellow and black wires, you can access the enable input, pin two, which can be uh, just grounded, but that's not um, suitable for PWM. If you want to do dimming, you have to use the enable input in the terminal block, and that has to be raised above ground um, to um, a voltage which uh, I've tested up to 12 volts, not sure how high you could go with that.